So we're going to talk about section 6.4. We're going to talk about sampling distributions. Here's the idea. In every other section that we've covered so far in ch both chapter 5 and chapter 6 up to this point, you have been dealing with populations. Notice how you've been writing mu and sigma for all of your homework. Hopefully you probably did that on your, your homework that you turned in, right? Sig signifying that we've been dealing with entire populations of people. We don't always deal with populations in this class. This class is called statistics because we're going to be taking samples not populations in general. It's very hard to know everything about an entire population. We deal with the sample instead. However, in order to make the transition from dealing with populations to letting samples approximate our populations, we need this section, sampling distributions, to talk a, a little bit about it. Now, I gotta warn you, the reason why people find this section confusing, there's a whole lot of theory, a whole lot of theory, and not a lot of application. So there's no real problems that we're gonna do. It's all a bunch of theory. Okay, that's why people find it confusing. That's why I need you to read through the section on your own as well as today. This might not do it for you completely. I need you to read through it when you get home as well. So that's section 6.4. You with me so far? All right. So our whole idea, here's the, the underlying idea. Underlying idea is that we're going to try to use sample measurements to estimate population, sample statistics to estimate population parameters. So the idea, Use a sample to estimate a population. And of course, we're talking about specific characteristics of those things. <clears throat> you see, it's not just good enough to say, oh, I'm pretty sure this sample is going to represent this population. Eh, let's go for it. You can't do that without a whole lot of legwork, and that's this is the legwork for that. So uh, what the first thing I need you to notice is that if we're dealing with a population of people or population of anything, then if we're going to take a sample from that, there's a whole lot of possible samples we could take, right? Right? Okay. Let's say this is your population. This classroom is all the people that exist in the world. That'd be freaky. We don't know each other really well, I'm sure. But let's say that this was the population, okay? And I said, I want to pick out a sample of five people. How many people in this one? There's 27 of you. Let's say, I wonder if I'm right, I just randomly guessed that. So there's 27 of you. Let's, let's pretend that there's only 27 people in the whole world. You 27 people, you're the chosen ones. Right? And I'm gonna pick out samples of five, because I don't wanna deal with all 27 you know, samples of five. Is there more than one possible sample of five? Well, I could pick you five. I could pick you five. That's two different samples, right? I could pick you five. I could pick all four of you and then her instead of you at the very end. That's a different sample of five, isn't it? Even though those four are the same, that one's different. Are there lots of different samples in this classroom of five people? Yes. How many? A lot. Specifically, how many? I'm gonna change this. Uh, nah, I'll leave it. Sorry. Notice how I use lowercase letter n for a sample, uppercase letter n for a population. Hopefully you remember that from like the first couple days of class. Do you remember that from the first couple days of class? Good. How many samples of size n are there uh, possible out of a population of size n? No, I just said n twice. So if you're not reading it, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. So how many of this size n samples are there out of size n? Shall we count? I just used this example. There's 27 people in the class. There's probably a little more now since we have some late people coming in. 
But let's say there's 27 people, and I'm picking samples of size 5. You, shall we count them? Let, let's try it. Otherwise, you need a better way to do it. So you stop me until you figure out a better way. Here's one. You five, that's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. There's five. There's six. There's seven. Just let me keep going. There's there's eight. There's these four and there's nine. These four and there's there's ten. Do you want? To, I'm gonna make you do it in a minute. Okay. Do you want to do that? You'll be here for the rest of your life. There's like eighty thousand. You just did that that quick? It's amazing. You fast counter. It's pretty good. One more question. Let's say that this is my sample of five people. Let's say I picked her out, then her out, then him out, then her out, then her out. Would it be different if I picked him out first, and then her, then her, then her, then her? Is that the same sample or a different sample? Same sample. Do I have the same five people? Yeah. Did it ma if I ask them all the same question, does it matter who got picked out first? Does order matter, or does order not matter? Do you see where I'm going with this? How many people are in your class for this experiment? 27. We're picking out samples of size. We want, there's 27 people, let's say on size 5. How many possible ways can you do that where the order doesn't matter? What are we talking about? Say it louder. Why not a permutation? That would be the order would matter. However, for a sample, the order in which you pick it out doesn't matter as long as you get the same quantity or the same exact people, no matter which way. You with me on that? So we're dealing with a combination. So how many possible samples are there if you have n people or n items in a population and you want n of them? It's a combination. That's how many possible samples there are. If we have 27 people in the classroom and we want samples of size 5, say that again, how much was it? Uh, 80,000. Like that? That's what you did? If we did this in this classroom, and I picked out samples of size 5, there would be 80,730 different samples of size 5 with just this class. How many want to show that? Do you want to take all of them? Do you want to, do, do you want to actually do that? Because to accurately represent a population, you'd either have to take every possible sample, or you'd have to use this theory stuff that I'm about to show you. Are you ready to learn it? Trust me, you're going to want to learn this. Otherwise, you can't make the next step. Otherwise, you have to be forced, you'd be forced to take all 80,730 of these samples. You don't want to do that. That's a lot. 80,000. I'd have to be counting. I counted up to five or eight or something like that. There would be 80,722 of those remaining for me to go through before I exhausted all possibilities. Now, to go any further, I need to tell you what a sample distribution actually means. A sampling distribution is a sampling distribution of blank. We can have one of three words here. We can have the mean. The port, well, one of many words actually. The mean, the proportion, the variance, or the standard deviation. Sampling distribution of, and then we're going to have some sort of a statistic. I'm going to put it in parentheses so you know it's some sort of a statistic like the mean, or the proportion of data, or the variance. So, such as mean. Proportion, etc. Now, of course, etc. is not a statistic for us, it just means and so on. Okay. So, sampling distribution of some sort of statistic. What a sampling distribution says is this. It's kind of an abstract idea because no one ever does this. Here's a sampling distribution. I want you to assume or pretend like you just took all the samples 
that are possible of a certain size out of a population. So stick with me on this. So for our example, you would have taken all 80,730 samples. You with me? You would have found out uh, from that sample what the mean was, or what the proportion was, or what the variance was from those five, five people. So like I'd ask you, well, like, what's your height? I'd say, what, what's your height? I'd average it. That's one statistic from that one sample, right? Are you following me along here? You'd do that 80,730 times. So you'd have 80,730 different samples. That means you're going to get 80,730 different heights for those groups of five people. You with me on that? You organize all of those into a table, and that is a sampling distribution. So what a sampling distribution does is this. It takes all the different samples for a certain size out of a population, finds out the key statistic you're looking for for each one of them, and it puts them in a table. Do you understand the idea of a sampling distribution? Sampling because you're taking samples. Distribution because you're organizing it. Sampling, distribution. Now, let me ask one more question before I go any further. What if I change this to not just groups of five, I want groups of six now. Does this number change? Then this would change. So this is for each particular size of sample that you want. If this number changes, does this, does this number change? Yeah. So this is a very specific thing. Set population size versus sample size, every possible sample of that size that you organize this is the statistics for each one of them. Are you ever going to do that? No one ever does that. That's a lot. We're going to look at this in a minute. So sampling distribution, I'll write this out in words for you. You're going to assume that you take all the possible samples of size little n. Assume you take all the possible samples of size n, so again, for us, that would be every possible sample of size 5 in this classroom, and you find the certain statistic for each one of them. And I'll say find the, uh, let's say, required statistic, so the one you're looking for. for each sample. In our case, that would be all 80,730 of them. We would have 80,730 different means. We'd have 80,730 different proportions. 80,730 different variances. Now you're if you understand that. If you organize all of those in a table or a graph or etc., this is called a sampling distribution. Organize all of those different statistics for each different sample into a chart, graph, table, you are going to get a sampling distribution. 